Yeah, so in my talk, I highlighted the uh, removal of uh, dimers from monoclonal antibodies, which already is a very substantial problem. But beyond aggregates and beyond antibodies, certainly there's many other classes of biomolecules for which we need new and improved resins. An example is, uh, for instance, virus particle for gene delivery. As the molecular size increases, there are bigger challenges in developing resins that have large pore size, small bead size, ability to withstand high flow rates and high pressures. So I think we have a lot of work to do still in this area where we produce materials capable of meeting these kinds of challenges. Yeah, so the design of the resin, I think, is uh, critical in many areas. Uh, obviously, we need these resins to be hydrophilic, so they're really biocompatible. One of the problems we observe often is that certain molecules uh, become unfolded when they bind to chromatography resins. So having the proper surface chemistry that will prevent this undesirable conformational changes is very important. We need to match the pore size to the size of the molecules we're trying to purify. And we need to have small bead sizes so we can have high resolution separations. Yeah, so this, uh, the phenomenon of on-column aggregate formation is uh, relatively new at least as reported in the scientific literature, but I think companies are known for a long time that often you get more aggregates out than you have fed to the chromatography columns. And this phenomenon is uh, not limited to just a few molecules, but we're finding that a lot of different antibodies exhibit uh, this kind of behavior. Very dependent on the resin type, the surface chemistry, the presence of uh, charged polymers that may be incorporated in the resin structure, we find really affect the formation of aggregates in the color. Yeah, so the, the basic principles of uh, frontal chromatography versus bind, wash, and elute have been known for a long time. But it's only recently that we have seen actual applications, in part because we now have resins that have sufficiently fast kinetics to allow for these different chromatographic modalities. So in frontal chromatography, if you have a mixture of two components that are bound with different strength, uh, you feed the mixture until breakthrough. And of course, you can recover the weakly bound species before the strongly bound species eventually emerges from the column. So the advantage is that you have an isocratic operation with as high a loading as you can get on the chromatography column. And the bind, wash, and elude, typically you have to utilize a gradient in order to get a, a robust separation. So this can create some problems of its own. The capacity is also limited because this becomes really a differential type of chromatography where you can only load a limited percentage of the column binding capacity. So how you choose between the two depends a little bit on the stage of purification. It depends on whether you have a, a relatively easy separation, but especially it depends on whether you can have multi-component binding with one component displacing the other from the chromatography press. Yeah, so the question of uh, micro-heterogeneity of biopharmaceuticals. I think we know that many of the uh, first-generation biopharmaceuticals are highly heterogeneous complex mixtures with lots of glycoforms, charge variants of different types, and so on. I think that in the long run, we will uh, probably be shooting for much more homogeneous products. So we'll need new resins that are more selective, that allow you to uh, purify charge variants, they're allowed to select for special glycoforms that are desirable and so on. On the same vein, we also need better analytical tools. Uh, we're still using uh, CX HPLC to determine charge variants with very low resolution. I think we need new materials that can be faster, better resolving and more reproducible in their application uh, to process monitoring.
I think we need uh, higher performance chromatography resins. Chromatography will definitely continue to play a big role in uh, protein analytics. If we could just make uh, chromatographic separation times uh, sub one minute, then we'll have a close to online, okay, still an at-line analysis, but also, at least we'll be able to monitor performance of our large-scale chromatography processes with some rational way, some rational tool that will tell us whether separation is being achieved or not. Hyphenate methodologies are going to be very important in this field. Already we see dynamic light scattering being applied at the process scale in some cases in combination with UV refractive index, but also incorporating more sophisticated tools, uh, uh, IR spectroscopy, for example, FTIR, as a way of monitoring protein structure on the fly. Uh, these are all promising avenues that we should be pursuing. We need these tools, uh, uh, PAT tools applied to uh, bioprocesses and uh, biopharmaceuticals. If we're going to go continuous, for example, for biopharmaceuticals, uh, this is only going to be possible if we have technology to monitor product, product quality as we go. So definitely, uh, beyond developing the chromatography matrix for the separation, we also need the analytical tools to continuously monitor the performance of our columns.